Hello everyone, I am Karan Masru. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to look at the solution of the problem that is reach a given score. First of all, let us start by understanding the question. What does question say? Consider a game where a player can score 3 or 5 or 10 points in a move. Okay. Given a total score n, find the number of distinct combinations to reach the given score. So, what are the different combinations using 3 points or 5 points and 10 points such that the total score is 10 that is asked in the question. For example, if n equals to 10, there are two ways. One is 5, 5, so 5 points and 5 points and another is 10 point only. If n equals to 20, there are four ways that is 5, 5, 5, 5, then uh, 5, 3 is and 1, 5, then 10, 10, then 5, 5, 10, okay. You don't need to read input or print anything. Your task is to complete the function count which takes n as input parameters and returns the answer to the problem. The expected time and auxiliary space both are big O of n. So now if we think about solving this problem, so basically what it is given in the question is that we are given a particular value of n and using 3 points, 5 points and 10 points, we need to tell how many combinations is possible such that we reach a total score of n. Please remember here total combination is said and not permutation. What do I mean by that? Let's say if n equals to 20, then there are four ways so, and your answer is four. What are those four ways? One is 5, 5, 5, 5. This will reach you 20 points. Another is 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 and 5. This will also reach you 20 points. Another is 10 and 10. This will also reach you 20 points and another is 5, 5 and 10. This will also reach you 20 points. Please remember we are only asked about the combinations and not permutations. It means we are not going to count 5, 10, 5 separately. 10, 5, 5 separately. No, we are not asked about permutations. We are asked only combinations. So the total number of possible ways is 4. Okay. Now, how can we solve this question? So, one way is the recursion way. Try all the possible combinations, right? So, what I can say is I can call f of n, which is basically f of n will is nothing but a recursive call, which will return the number of ways to reach a total score of n using 3 points or 5 points or 10 points, okay? So, uh, it will be the number of ways to, so in the last step, now it will return me the number of ways to reach a total score of n using 3 points or 5 points or 10 points, right, total combinations. In the last step, it might have taken a coin of 3 or it might have taken a coin of 5 or it might have taken a coin of 10. So, I can tell it, it is nothing but f of n minus 3 if it takes a coin of 3 in the last step or f of n minus 5 if it takes a coin of 5 in the last step or f of n minus 10 means it takes a coin of 10 in the last step. So, for example, f of 20 is f of 17 plus f of 15 plus f of 10. That is number of ways to reach uh, 10, number of ways to reach 17 and number of ways to reach 15. Their addition will give me f of uh, 20. Why? Because I can either take 3 coin in the last step or 5 coin or 10 coin, right? Now, please remember, once I have taken a 5 amount of coin, I will not again take 3 amount of coin. Why? Because that will give me all permutations and I want only combinations. So, how to avoid the uh, repeating permutations? What I can do is, I can only take the coins in increasing amount of denotion. So, here I have taken f of 3. So, here I still have 3 choices. f of 3. So, this will become f of n minus 6 if I take a coin of 3. If I take a coin of 5, it will become n minus 8 and it will become f of n minus 13 if I take a coin of 10. But here, if I have taken a coin of 5, it means now I am only going to take a coin of 5 or 10. I will not take a coin of 3. Right. Why? Because let's say the n is equals to 8. Okay. So, uh, let's say in the first step, I took a coin of 5. So, it will give me f of 3 I, or I took a coin of 3. So, it will give me f of 5. Now, here also I decided, here I decided to take a coin of 3. So, this will become 0 and here I decided to take a coin of 5. So, this will also become 0. Right. So, here in the first step, I took a coin of 5. So, it became f of 3 and here in the first step, I took a coin of 3. So, it became f of 5. Then I took a coin of 5 and here I took a coin of 3. So, here the co selected coins are which in this step I selected 5, in this step I selected 3, here I selected 3 and here I selected 5. So, 5, 3 and 3, 5 but these both are same only. So, uh, in order to avoid this repetitions, what I am doing is 
I if I have taken a three amount of coin, I can take three amount, five amount as well as ten amount. But if I have taken any five amount of coin, now I can take only five amount or ten amount. I cannot again take back three amount of coin. Okay, so the I will not get only all permutations. I will get unique combinations. And similarly, if I have taken a ten amount of coin, then I can only keep taking ten amount of coins only. I will not be able to take any other coin. Okay. So in this way we will solve. Let me take some more things. So here I can take another coin of five, that is f of n minus ten, or I can take a coin of ten. It will give me n minus fifteen. Here I can only take a coin of where ten, so it will give me f of n minus twenty, and so on. This process will repeating. Whenever we reach a negative value, f of negative value, we will return zero, and we will not go further because if I have returned, uh, if I have reached negative. it means there is no possible combination for example if for f of 8 i took a coin of 5 so it became f of 3 i again took a coin of 5 so it became f of a minus 2 now it will become negative only right so there is no possible way so i'll return 0 and return from the recursion and what is the another base case there is two base case one is when the number becomes negative you return there is no possible way another base case is whenever it reaches 0 it means we have found one way So, for example, it was f of eight. I took a coin of three. It became f of five. I took a coin of five. It became f of zero. It became zero. It means what? Walking on this path, I was able to select coins in such a way that their sum is equal to n. So, I have found one way. So, I will return one. So, in that way, the whole tree will be formed. And from some points, I'll return zero. And from some points, I'll return one. Okay. So, uh, the, that will be the whole tree. and finally it will return with the answer in this recursion but uh, since this is a recursive way the expected time complexity will go in exponential and hence we need to think of something more efficient okay now whenever the time complexity is exponential and we want to make it efficient one way is to think of dynamic programming so when can we think of dynamic programming whenever there are overlapping sub problems we can think of dynamic programming so are there overlapping sub problems here yes see this is f of 10 this is also f of 10 and if i draw the recursion tree i will be able to see more overlapping sub problems right so uh, i know that it has overlapping sub problems so now i can solve it using dynamic programming okay so let's solve it with using dynamic programming using the bottom up approach so now how will we solve it using dynamic programming in a bottom up approach so i'll fill a table okay and what would be the table size like what what would it contain basically the table would be like this dp of n plus 1 where dp of i will denote the number of combinations to reach a total of i using coins of 3 or 5 or 10 okay now so uh, i have taken this table first of all I, i'll mark all of the values as 0 okay and i will mark dp of 0 as 1 why dp of 0 as 1 if you want the total sum total points to be 0 you do not take any coin that is empty subset that is one way right so dp of 0 is 1 now uh, what i will do is first of all i'll see the all the different ways we can reach the given scores using three amount of coins then we will add the ways using five amount of coins and then we will add the ways using 10 amount of coins okay we are adding it one after the other so that we get only unique combinations like in recursion what i said once we are selecting three amount of coins we will keep selecting that only then when we go to five we will not come back to three if we select a coin of amount five we will not select a coin again of three we will select of five and 10 only so there are only unique combinations so for i equals to 3 to n i can say dp of i is equals to dp of i plus dp of i minus 3 number of ways to reach uh, the sum of i equal to number of ways to reach the sum i calculated till now plus number of ways to reach a sum of i minus 3 if i am taking a three amount of coin right then after this for loop in dp table i will get the number of ways to reach a particular sum using only three amount of coins then i will say for i equals to 5 to n dp of i is equals to dp of i plus dp of i minus 5 that is number of ways to reach a sum i is number of ways to reach sum i calculated till now plus number of ways to re, uh, reach sum i minus 5 if we select five amount of coin in the last step 
so after this step in my dp table i will have number of ways to reach a sum i using three amount of coins and five amount of coins okay and since i am using three first and then five so there will be only unique combinations then i will say for i equals to 10 to n dp of i is equals to dp of i plus dp of i minus 10 that is number of ways to reach some i is number of ways to reach some i calculated till now plus number of ways to reach some or number of ways to reach points i minus 10 if we take 10 amount of coin in the last step and after this step in my dp table i will have the number of ways to reach a sum i using three um, uh, three amount of coins then five amount of coins and then 10 amount of coins so i will have all unique combinations and then finally i will return dp of n which will be my answer now let's look at its actual implementation so if you look at the actual implementation so i have taken a vector of size n plus 1 and initialized all the values with 0 then i have taken dp of 0 as 1 and then as mentioned i have done dp of i is equal to dp of i plus i minus 3 plus i minus 5 and plus i minus 10 and finally return dp of n now let's submit this code let's submit it Okay, so we have solved this question successfully. I hope you have understood this solution completely. Thank you.